Hello everyone, welcome to Ansi in France. Obviously this isn't Russia, but I'm on holiday here at the moment and it's absolutely beautiful. There is just a lake behind me and obviously some mountains too. It's amazing here. Um, it's actually really near Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, so if you're ever in the area, I'd highly recommend coming here. We've also had amazing weather, so we got really lucky with that. Uh, but while I am here, I thought I would share seven reasons why I like living in Russia and more specifically the things that Russia has that England doesn't. I recently put up a post on my YouTube channel asking you guys what you love about living in Russia. So if you're interested in seeing some more answers from Russians or other expats, make sure to check that post out. I put it in the description. But anyway, let's get into the list of the seven things I love about living in Russia. Number one is transportation. And obviously both countries have good transportation, but for trains specifically, I have to give Russia a win on this one because not only is Russia much cheaper, uh, just as an example for this, my family live 30 minutes away from London on the train and it costs 2,500 rubles to go 30 minutes on the train. Whereas in Russia, you can go from Moscow to St. Petersburg on, I forgot how long the train was, but maybe like six hours on the train for the same price, like 2,500 rubles, maybe even like 4,000 rubles, can't remember specifically how much we paid and we went, but it was a very good price compared to how much I pay to go to London and back to my family. Also with timekeeping, Russia does so much better. I remember living in England, I'd literally have like late trains every single day to work when I'd go to London and it was an absolute nightmare because it's hard to like organize your life around trains that will probably turn up late. And a type of transportation that Russia has that England doesn't, but it makes sense why we don't, um, is the like sleeper trains, like the Trans-Siberian trains. Obviously it makes sense that Russia has these because it's such a big country, but England doesn't have them. Maybe some people would want the option, I don't know if you're taking a really late train, maybe it would be nice if you could sleep, uh, but yeah, we don't have these like sleeper trains in the UK. Number two is free ice rinks, and moving to Russia originally I didn't realise what a great thing it was, and until I actually started ice skating. But in the UK, you have to pay to go to literally every single ice rink. This can cost like around 500 rubles, or so like five pounds or maybe even more, every time you wanna go ice skating. But in Russia, there is local uh, ice rinks that you can just go to. Obviously, you need your own ice skates to go, but um, yeah, it's very good and a great activity to do during the winter. Number three is the good lunch deals that you can get in canteens. This isn't really something you can come across in the UK. You can go to like a grocery store and get like a meal deal for like three pounds and get like a sandwich, a pack of crisps and a drink. Uh, so this would cost like around 300 rubles. But in Russia and specifically Moscow, um, you can go to a canteen during lunchtime and get like a whole nice meal. You can sit down with your family for around the same price or even less, maybe like 200 rubles. You can get a really nice meal. You can get a healthy meal, healthier than the UK meal deals um, and enjoy that during lunchtime. Number four is the parks. And England has really nice parks. For example, Hyde Park in London, that's really nice. But um, in Moscow specifically, uh, because that is where I've moved to, uh, there are so many amazing parks and usually with a lake as well, which is fun because you can hire out a little pedaling bike to go around the lake, which is really fun. You can hire out scooters, bikes, all sorts, and it's absolutely beautiful. This summer, I actually made two summer travel guides uh, for Moscow. So if you're interested in seeing what Moscow is like and the things you can do in Moscow during the summer, make sure you check those videos out. They were so much fun to film. I also filmed them with two of my YouTuber friends. So yeah, do check those out after this video. Number five is the healthcare. And in England, we have a thing called the NHS, which is basically free healthcare for everyone. So whatever happens, you don't have to pay anything for any operation, for like having a baby or anything like that, which is great. However, at the end of January this year, my boyfriend had a ski accident where he broke something in his knee and he had to have an operation. And he had his operation in about two days. I think he had to wait two days until he had his operation and it was all paid for by his insurance. And he really doesn't pay that much in insurance, by the way. It's not like he has this crazy expensive thing that covers everything. No, it's just 
the one he was recommended by his university. Um, and yeah, that was all paid for. Um, and he was seen to very, very quickly and he had a very good experience. However, he does have to pay for his like aftercare physio sessions, which in the UK, you probably could get this covered for, you, you probably wouldn't have to pay for. But if he did have this accident in the UK, he would have had to wait for six months or even more. It could have been one year, two years, I don't know, maybe three years, maybe that's pushing it. But he would have had to wait a very, very long time to have his operation because there's such a long waiting list in the UK because it is a free system. So I think this gives a really good comparison from England to Russia just their healthcare systems and how they work. Number six is that you'll always be employed as a native English speaker. And that's because people always need an English teacher, if that's for kids, if that's for adults, or they'll need English translations for maybe university or different types of things. So there's always gonna be opportunities for native English speakers. But obviously I wouldn't have had that same thing in the UK because everyone is a native English speaker. So it's easier in that way because I wanted to be an English teacher. So obviously that's much less competitive in Russia than it is in the UK. Number seven and the last thing on my list for today is that Russia knows how to clear up the snow, which sounds obvious and it's like, well, duh. But in the UK, when it snows, everything shuts down. Like school is closed, even if it's like this much snow, you know? School is closed, uh, cars can't go anywhere, trains stop. Uh, plane stop just everything stops when it snows um, and that just isn't the case in Russia so life just goes on even if there's like this much snow which I've experienced before last winter it was negative 25 degrees in Moscow which isn't the coldest part of the country but it's still very cold and there was a lot of snow and everything just ran normally and it was amazing <laughs> so I think English should take a page out of Russia's book and learn how to cope with snowy weather so that is it for this video I really hoped you enjoyed watching it and maybe you learned something about England in this video uh, but do let me know in the comment section what you love about living in Russia I'd love to know and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as I post a new video every single Sunday about living and working in Russia so yeah if you enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next Sunday bye